Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pasta a la trapanese. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make an amazing pasta featuring Sicily's amazing tomato pesto. And I am very excited to be sharing my version with you. And I love the green Genovese style pesto, but when super sweet cherry tomatoes are in season, I really believe this pesto is the best pesto. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with one optional step, and that would be blanching some almonds, which is simply done by bringing a couple cups of water to a boil, and then we'll pull that off the heat and we'll dump in our almonds. And what we'll do is give that a stir and let it sit for about three or four minutes, at which point the skins on the almonds will come off very, very easily. Okay, they will pretty much slip right off. And we do this because the skins of almonds are really tough and they can actually irritate the throats of some people. So yes, you can make this pesto without doing that, but this only takes a few extra minutes and I think it's much, much nicer. So once those soak long enough, we'll simply drain them. And as soon as they're cool enough to handle, we'll go ahead and peel off the skins. Although you might notice some steam coming off these since I was too impatient to wait. But either way, we'll prep about a half cup. And then besides the almonds, we are also gonna need some garlic and salt as well as some Pecorino Romano cheese, although some people do use Parmesan or a combination. And then even though this is a tomato-based pesto, we're still gonna need some basil, as well as a little bit of fresh mint, which for this dish is the secret ingredient that everybody knows. And then we can't make pesto without some good olive oil, plus the star of the show, a pound of the best, sweetest cherry tomatoes you can find, which I got at the farmer's market but it was slightly under a pound, so I tossed in a few sun gold and a couple small Roma tomatoes from the garden. And then before we toss everything into a blender, I'm gonna add my sliced garlic and my salt to this mortar, and I'm gonna smash it into a very fine paste. Okay, classically, the entire pesto would be made in one of these, although a much bigger one, but you probably don't have one, and that's a lot of work. And I think all the other ingredients are fine in a blender, the only one that doesn't come out the same would be the garlic. So if you can, smash it up like this before you start. And then once that's set, we can toss our almonds in the blender, followed by the cheese. And by the way, this is not random. I want you to go in this order. Since I want the cheese and the nuts to kind of grind up first, before the wetter stuff starts mixing in. And then we'll toss in our mint and our basil. And yes, those are small leaves. And that's because I grew it on our deck and I got to pick it nice and young and tender and sweet. And that's it, we'll transfer in our mashed garlic and salt, followed by our olive oil, and then last but not least, our cherry tomatoes. And then we'll pop on the lid and we'll start blending this. And of course, we're gonna begin by pulsing on and off. And the almonds and cheese at the bottom will blend first. And as we keep pulsing, everything will eventually be incorporated. And then once it comes together, we can blend it on high speed until it's the exact texture we want, which for me is pretty smooth, but some people do prefer to leave it coarse, which is probably closer to the texture you'd get if you used a mortar and pestle. But anyway, to me, this is perfect right here. And of course, like any sauce, hot or cold, we definitely want to give it a taste and maybe add a little more salt if we need it. But other than that, believe it or not, this sauce is done. Okay, pesto a la trapanese is a raw sauce, so we don't need to cook it before we add it to our pasta. Speaking of which, it's time to cook some. And as usual, we're using some well-salted boiling water. And classically, we'd use a pasta called buziate, which this isn't exactly, but it's very similar in shape. All right, this was actually sold as bucatini fusilli, but the good news is pretty much any similarly shaped pasta will work, or any kind of pasta, I guess. But anyway, you decide. I mean, you are after all the Maximilian of cooking like a Sicilian. But I do think we want to use something that's going to trap that delicious pesto sauce. And this is a perfect shape for that. And what we'll do is go ahead and boil that until it's done to our liking. But keep in mind, we are not going to cook this in the sauce like we do with a lot of pasta recipes. So please make sure it's cooked enough because it's not going to get any more tender in the sauce. And then what I'll do once I decide the pasta is cooked is use a strainer, or a spider as we call it in the business, since it looks like a spider web. But anyway, we'll use that to transfer it into a bowl. 
And it's totally fine if a little bit of that water comes along with it, since some of that starchy cooking liquid is actually part of the sauce. In fact, once you're done, save that water, because we're going to add some more of that in. Plus, if we need more later, we want it to be available. And then to finish this, what we'll do is transfer in about a third of a cup of that pasta water, and then as much of that pesto sauce as we want, along with a nice big pinch of salt. And then we'll take a couple spoons, and we will toss this until it's thoroughly and evenly coated. Oh, and I should mention, I only cooked eight ounces of pasta, and the amount of pesto we made is enough for a pound, with probably a little bit left over to enjoy on some bread. But anyway, I just wanted to mention, I'm using slightly less than half of this sauce. And that's it, once that's been mixed together, I usually toss in a little more grated pecorino. And we'll give that one last toss before we serve up. And as I spoon this into the bowl, please note how beautifully creamy and decadent this looks. Okay, it almost looks like we added some cream. And besides the luxurious texture, I think the color is absolutely stunning. And that's it, we'll finish the top with a little more grated cheese. Whoops, I lost a shred. Don't worry, I will eat that between shots. And then I also like to sprinkle over a little bit of chopped almond. And then last but not least, a small and adorable sprig of basil. And that's it, my pasta a la trapanese is ready to enjoy. And that, my friends. It's just an absolutely tremendous dish of pasta. Okay, first and foremost, we have those beautiful sweet cherry tomatoes, which I think if we're gonna make a raw tomato sauce, are probably the best choice. All right, they're not just sweet and savory, but they have that little bit of acidity to them, which really brightens everything else up. And then what the almonds do here is the same thing that pine nuts do in a regular pesto, right? They add that nutty earthy richness, which marries perfectly with the cheese and the herbs. So while this appears to be totally different, there really are a lot of similarities with traditional Genovese style pesto, which I love, but in the middle of summer, when cherry tomatoes are at their peak, I think if you're in the mood for pesto, this is the way to go. And while I've been to Italy, I've never been to Sicily, so I'm really not sure how exactly close my version is, and hopefully one of these days I'll find out. But in the meantime, I absolutely love everything about this, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, in.